So welcome to part six. We're building our flying saucer and now we're going to add these cool ray guns to it. And you can see they're used all over the place. And you can size them and add them to the, the uh, flying saucer and make it look that much more lethal. So here's where we're getting started with this. And first I'm going to start with a new object. It makes a little sense to do that. And I'm going to choose the left view. So I'll make a new object by going object, new. I'm going to name it right away under settings, object. And I'll call this new ray guns say OK. And I'm going to view the le view it from the left, so I'll hit the 4 on the number keypad, and yep, there's the left view right there. Turn off arc, rotate, so I'm ready to start modeling. Whoops. Just like that. So now as I put this together, I'm going to start with a cylinder, and I've got to make a perfect horizontal cylinder 60 units in length. Well, this is trickier than it sounds. Even with snap to grid turned on, when I drag this thing, it's very easy to put this thing on an angle. So to get this thing perfectly horizontal, I'm going to suggest make it fill the screen and start rocking it up until you can see the little jaggies that make out that yellow bounding box. When they finally go away and there's no jaggies and it's perfectly straight, you got yourself as close to horizontal as you can be. And it takes a little practice. If you get it wrong the first time, delete it, try again. But it looks like to me I've got a perfect horizontal cylinder and that's really, really important for this. Next, the instruction says make it 60 units long. Okay, it's a primitive so I can double click it change its length to 60. And then it says here to make the start 5 and the end diameter 18. So a double click, the diameter start will be 5 and the end will be 18. And I'll say OK. So now it's shaped more conically. Now I can still see a little jaggy on this thing, so maybe it wasn't perfect, but we'll see how we do with this. Next, uh, we're going to set the latitudinal divisions to 1 and its location to 0, 0, 0. Okay. Latitudinal divisions you can see when you go into flat shade or wire shade. It's how many segments this is made of. And we really don't need eight segments to make this thing up. When smooth shaded, it won't look any different. So we want to remo remove those segments and reduce the memory issues that we might have with it by changing the latitudinal divisions to one. And now it's nice and smooth. Looks the same, but it's eight times faster to load. It's a simpler object. That's good. And to put it at zero, 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 I'll double click it and change its location to zero, zero, and zero. So now it lines up with the origin right at the start. Next object, we've got to create some rounded ends to this with a couple of spheres. So it says go to flat shaded mode and make a sphere 18 units in diameter. Okay, flat shaded, flat shaded. and sphere 18 units, I'll make it about this big and double click it. And then I'll change its diameter to 18 to make it match and we're good. Now it says uh, we would like to rotate it. It says create the sphere, rotate it exactly 90 degrees and align it to the end of the cone. Okay, to rot this, rotate this thing 90 degrees, this is the next big trick. The rotate tool is here, and the art of rotation is not to use your left mouse button. If you do, you've got two axes of rotation that you've got to control, and that's too hard. Undo. Use your right mouse button, click and hold, and drag side to side, and you can rotate this thing. And more to the point, if you look down below, as you rotate, it'll tell you how many degrees you've rotated by. So I'm going to rotate this and watch down below. I'll take it as close as I can to 90 degrees. Bang on, let go. Oh, it fell off the 90, so I'll undo it and do it again. Practice makes perfect, and a steady hand is really useful. But it can be done with a couple of tries. And I did it that time. And now located at the end, well, mathematically, this should be easy too. You could use the move tool and try to place it, something like that. But you can also double click it. And remember, it should be at zero, zero. And the Z location of it should be minus whatever the length of this thing is to put the center of it right there. That's minus 60 because the original cylinder was 60. So that puts it in place really, really quickly. Now I can see it's a little bit off, but you'll also notice everything's matching up really well. Oh, I can see it, but by the time you zoom out on this thing, it doesn't matter too much if there's a little inconsistency. And now the sphere that goes at this end, that should be easy too. I'll select this. I'm going to copy, Control C. I'm going to paste, Control V. Nothing seems to have changed, but if I move, you'll notice I now have two spheres. The original is still in place, and this is actually the copy. And I can snap this into place now. The grid seems to be working. Double click it and make its diameter 5. So it fits just about perfectly, because I missed by one here. I'll put it at the origin, zero, zero, zero. Perfect. 
So now I want to add some barrel rings to this thing. Uh, creating the barrel rings, perfectly horizontal cylinders, 30 units in length. Okay, 30 units in length, really? Okay. Uh, double click and change. Okay, we're going to stain. So I'll start with the cylinder because that's always the hard part. Now, you know what? You, if you've already got a cylinder that's been made, you could just reuse this one. So I'm going to copy and paste that one. I'm going to work a little less hard. If it's supposed to be 30 units in length, you can change it easily, but I think that was just an approximation. I'm going to go read the rest of the instructions. It says, um, double click, it said its diameter start and end to 20, latitude to 1, length to 1. Okay, double click, start and end to 20, 20, latitude 1, and length to 1. And I get that perfect disc. Nice, that was easy. And because I got snap to grid on, it's actually bouncing right around where I want it to go too. Move the ring to the place it at the front of the barrel. Be sure that the grid snap is on so it'll snap into place. Copy paste another ring and move it a few units down the barrel. Use control V to paste easily and leave animator in move mode. Repeat until you get about six rings or so. Oh, okay. Let's copy, paste. I'm hitting the M key for move and I can eyeball this. Paste and move. Paste and move. And you get the idea. Now this isn't going to be perfect until we check it from all angles. We just want to make sure this is as even as, evenly spaced as possible. And if you want to get more evenly spaced, you could double click it and see where its length is. It's, let's see, this is minus 3. This one is minus 7, so 4 units over. This one 11, again 4 units over. You get the idea. You could just keep on adding 4 to it to make sure mathematically it's perfect. Now as we rotate this, we'll just double check and yeah, lo and behold, these things are not lining up where they should. So we'll snap those into place. I think the easiest way to do that is just to keep on snapping zeros where they belong here and here and here. I find that's faster than trying to drag it in place. So we've just about got this. The laser gun is just about intact. You can customize it, grouping, copying, and pasting. But I'm going to give you one more tip as this goes here. And this is to convert, convert this thing to mesh. Because if you resize it, you're going to have problems. I'll show you quickly how that winds up looking. If I took this entire object, in fact, I'll just drag select and take the whole thing like this. And if I were to group it, build and group, I, it looks like I've got myself a pretty good start on this. I'm going to make another version and watch what happens. Select this, copy, paste, and move. I've got two ver versions of this thing. They look the same. It's grouped, so it's got a bounding box. I'm going to ungroup this top one, and I'm going to build and convert this to mesh, and then group it back again. And although they look the same now, you'll see what the difference is in a second. So I'm going to take both these things and copy them and go back to my flying saucer object. Here's my saucer there. So if I wanted to paste this in, you'll notice the size and scale has to be adjusted here a little bit. So watch what happens if I start to adjust the size and scale of this thing. Here, let's make this a little smaller so we can actually see what's going on. If I scaled this down with the scale tool, the top one is a mesh, the bottom one is primitives. So let's scale it down and see how it's looking. Okay, so it's about that size. Now let's go a little closer and look at it. And what you will see is the proportions of the bottom one have gotten really messed up. The rings are all flattened out. The, the thickness is really wacky. Everything else seems to be okay, but those rings are really bad. The top one, much better. And it's because this is a mesh and because this one down here is not a mesh, it's primitives, and they don't scale well. So before you scale anything, convert it to a mesh and you'll get much better results. There you go. Hope that helped. See what you can do with it.